Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, I am Ravi Chandran from the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, IIT Kanpur. I have been giving you this course uh, through NPTEL MOOC on developing soft skills and personality. I am very happy that uh, we have now completed half of the course already, four weeks are over and then uh, there are very interesting discussions happening on the forum. I request those who are not participating yet to join the forum. And there are very interesting answers, even people are giving themselves even before I could give the answers. Some of the answers that I liked, I have marked uh, as the best answer. Uh, having said that, now we are just moving to the remaining of, of the course, which I think is going to be as exciting as how we uh, started before. Four weeks are over, now we are on the fifth week and this is the first module and lecture number 25. Now, in this week, I am going to bring in a new concept and then introduce you to something again you have been taking for so much for granted and it has been uh, uh, permeating our entire life, but we do not stop and then think about what it is doing to us. You might have guessed what I am going to tell about, it is about technology and how it is related to communication, how it is making or marring our ability to develop our own personality and use soft skills to enhance it. Now, in this uh, module and this lecture in particular, I am just going to introduce you to the concept, the technological personality that we have been developing and whether it is the right thing to do or not and why we are developing that kind of personality. Now, before we actually get into the core concept, let us quickly remember what we did in the last lecture and then I would give you some important points in terms of highlights. In the last lecture, I continued with more challenges that you can uh, face in terms of uh, uh, handling telephone calls and particularly dealing with difficult callers. And in terms of difficult callers, I talk to you about dealing with angry callers. So, most of the aspects of dealing with angry callers are similar to the way you deal with an angry person in conflict resolution but there are certain uh, special traits which again we discussed and after that I focused on some essential telephone skills you should have whether at basic or at advanced level. The key important thing that I started with was asking you to manage your voice. I said even you can record it, train it and then say key words like uh, sorry, thank you, most welcome, etc. And you have to be an active listener throughout the telephone conversation. You should be cheerful because the cheerfulness that you will have by feeling good will affect the other person and make the person also feel good. You should know your caller in advance or even if you do not know the caller in advance, try to guess what is the caller in terms of age, in terms of mood, in terms of uh, the title by which you should address the caller. You may have some initial fear, especially if you are in a new place and then you are supposed to handle some tough callers, you may have some initial fear and apprehension, but only by practicing and then doing the things that you fear, you will be able to develop confidence. And I also told you some amount of initial fear is necessary to remain focused and energize yourself. Be polite, use polite expressions, avoid jargons, technical words which are not very familiar. Even if you use or if somebody is using, seek clarifications, by that way you will avoid miscommunication. Anticipate problems when you are making a call because uh, not all the time the calls are going to end very peacefully and in a harmonious manner, there are likely to be problems. 
Overall, you should consider calls as opportunities to grow your personality, to enhance the image of the company or the people whom you represent. Ultimately, you should be the person anybody wants to talk to. You should never be the person people want to avoid. Okay, you know, you yourself might be avoiding people. You should not become one of those persons whom people want to avoid. Become the most popular person people want to talk to. Follow the tips that I suggested. Now, if you remember, I ended the uh, lecture by saying that there are some people who just want to keep away from technology okay, to be with themselves like the musical genius like A. R. Rahman, particularly the time when he was uh, uh, creating his music, he wants to be completely cut off from uh, telephone calls. Now, have telephone and other such technology interposed as our personality? Obviously, yes. Are we still remaining humans or are we changing according to technology? The answer is like we have become techno-humans we are technological man, we are technological woman, we are technological kids. So, we have, we have just changing ourselves according to technology. There are theorists who are working on this techno culture or how technology is affecting the living environment and there are terms associated with that. One interesting term that you should know is that now we are considered as cyborgs. What are cyborgs? Okay. Cyborgs are part human and part machine. And Donna Haraway uh, in her uh, famous book, Simeon's Cyborgs and Women, refers to the techno-humans that we have all become as cyborgs. Now, cyborgs are sh actually uh, shortened from the phrase cybernetic organisms. Now, what do cyborgs indicate? They indicate that the boundaries between man and machine are blurred. So, now you cannot distinguish man from machine. Okay, they have become integrated, they have become part and parcel. Organisms are no longer bodies of knowledge, but biotic components, a kind of information processing device. That is what uh, Donna Haraway says. The meaning is that she says that we are not having our own knowledge about ourselves, but we are becoming like a kind of uh, 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 floppy disk or a kind of pen drive in which we are carrying information by which people can access us, use us, manipulate us. Cyborgs, cybernetic organisms, according to her, is a result of a fusion between biology and technology. Okay. Cybernetics is also another uh, field that has given this coinage, cyborgs, because cyborgs, the first part is actually from cybernetics. Cybernetics simply is the study of control systems. But in today's world, what kind of control systems? So, we can understand those systems which are actually controlled by machines and today machines which are actually being controlled by computers or artificial intelligence. So, that is what is meant by cybernetics. Now, you can get a feel of what I am going to tell you that now human beings are controlled by machines which are again controlled by machines or computers which have artificial intelligence that can act, behave much better than a normal human being. And we are cyborgs, some of us are still in the process of becoming, but there are other uh, theorists who say that we have already become cyborgs. How? Let us see how we became cyborgs, if you are agreeing to the theorist, what made us become so. Uh, take a look at uh, this quotation from Marshall McLuhan. Uh, in his famous book, The Medium is the Message. What McLuhan talks about is that, he says that all media, that is any medium that we use are all extensions of some form of human faculty. So, let me read the quote and then explain to you. Quote from Marshall McLuhan, all media are extensions of some human faculty the wheel is an extension of the foot. 
ok the from the wheel we have car. So, he says or bike or even cycle, he says that that itself is an extension of the foot, the book is an extension of the eye ok, we have, we have extended the book. So, now you can understand, now we have e books ok, now then we have monitors, TVs, now these are all higher projections of eye, clothing he says an extension of the skin, electric circuitry an extension of the nervous system. So, all kinds of this technological innovations, inventions for McLuhan one way or other or actually extends of some kind of human faculty, some kind of human functioning, some kind of human parts which are represented in this. But what happens in this techno culture or cyber culture scenario? The extensions have actually become the real, the extensions have gained so much autonomy that they have become the real. What do I mean by this? For example, you start having something okay, as a kind of technological extension, but then the extension actually becomes real, it becomes part and parcel of you. A kind of metal that is inserted in your body after a fracture. Okay. So, initially it was an outside one, but after some time it becomes you, you cannot live without that. The pacemaker that is kept inside the heart, again without it you cannot live. So, so much so you become part and parcel and then there are uh, some thing which we thought that are actually extensions, they have also become completely autonomous. Okay. They define and give identity to the source and subject of extension. What is meant by this? they try to even give identity to the source subject of ext extension that is human beings. Now, the pen that you carry whether it is a simple pen or a Parker pen, okay, so that tries to define give you some identity. The bike that you drive, the car that you drive, so whether you are driving a nano or whether you are driving a BMW or Audi. So, that is actually initially it became an extension of you, but slowly it starts defining you, slowly it starts giving an identity to you. So, even the clothing, the brand that you wear, so it also tells something about you. So, everything that you take as accessories initially as extension, sooner or later have started defining you, giving you an identity. Now, in this scenario, Dono Haraway again points out that machine is given human treatment and human is treated like a machine. So, ironically it should be the other way around, human beings should be treated as humans and machines should be treated as machine or we should recognize them as machines. But unfortunately the human beings are losing their humanity okay, with that the personality which actually defines a human being and they are slowly becoming machines or machine like. Let me tell you a story just to illustrate this uh, point. We all know that we have reached a point where as rightly pointed out by Donna Haraway that the things which we purchase are so possessed by us and then we get so irritated, so annoyed even if somebody touches or uh, somebody makes any scratch or anything on that, especially all the electronic gadgets or any of the um, equipment that we have. Now, this is about the story of a father who purchased a new car okay. and we all know like if when you buy a new car or even you have a new bike or any new machine that you have, new TV, new phone. So, you do not even want a small scratch on that, especially when it is a car, if there is a slight scratch, it feels as if it hurts you, it touches your heart, you feel very bad about it. You cannot talk about dent, 
okay, which can completely leave you in a sense of trauma if somebody hits your new car. Now, the father uh, has taken the car out from his garage and he went inside to close it and then take something from that before he wanted to start the car. At the same time, he saw his small son okay, around 8 or 9 years old. So, he came and then he had a nail, okay, a sharp object by which he can write something. So, he was actually scribbling something on the new car. The father saw that from a distance and he got so wild, so angry. For a while, he did not think that it is his son who is writing there and then making this mark on the car. So, he had a, a hammer. In fact, he went to take the hammer from the garage for uh, tightening something, hitting something. So, he took the hammer, he came running and in his anger, he just hit the son on the hand on the fingers, the two fingers which he was using to write something. Now, the boy cried in pain and then uh, he hit the fingers so fast, the fingers were crushed. He took him to the hospital, he came to his senses. So, they had to actually uh, remove one finger fully, the other one partially and the third finger is uh, quite damaged. Now, the son returned home and then uh, uh, the car was still there and then the uh, father was also there. So, the father uh, uh, felt little awkward and then the son said, Daddy, I did not know that you will be so hurt. Okay, I just wanted to write something there, but can it be removed? So, he said that, Hi, ah, yes son, it can be removed. I just have to spray some paint on that and uh, it is do not worry about it. I can just uh, spray and then I have uh, this remover also. So, if I use it, so uh, it will be as new as the old one, the car that was new. The son listened to this and then he said, okay daddy, I am happy that you can uh, recover your uh, car and then it will become uh, as the new one as it was before. But just tell me one thing and I just want to know. So, dad asked what? He asked him, Tell me, when will these fingers grow? So, the father was completely speechless and then he uh, realized the mistake that he did and he was not able to say anything and then he just reached the car and then he just saw the scribbling that the son had done and it was there with some blood stain and while thought of removing it, he wanted to see what he has written and the son has written, I love you so much daddy. Okay. So, the father started sobbing. The lesson of the story is that the machine that we use become part and parcel of us and we become so obsessed with that, we are not able to distinguish between the machine and the man, okay, between humanity and machine. So, the personality gets blurred there. That is why Donna Haraway says, our machines are disturbingly lively and we ourselves are frighteningly inert. In the story that I told you, the car looks as if it is a human being and it cannot be touched. So, it will hurt it so much. The father got so angry and then he came and hit his son's own fingers and frighteningly inert like inactive and then as if you are dead. So, he had no feeling at that moment. He just thought that his son is a 
troublesome machine and then the car is just like a human being and he is going and hurting, scratching and affecting the car instead of thinking the other way around. Now, this is the danger. So, how far are you taking your extensions of your own self, your own personality as real and then how much do you take it to your heart? Now, this is one lesson where you should realize and then you should ask yourself, uh, have you transgressed this boundary that you should have set between you and machine and then within this boundary, so the people around you, so should be there not the machines which are surrounding you. Let us uh, look more at how this change has happened, how the cyborgian shift took place. It is because of the changing times, amazing transformation has taken place in the cyberspace, cyber culture. So, you have YouTube, so today like the entire uh, classroom has become completely mobile. I am teaching and then I am teaching for about 15,000 students, you are able to watch it on YouTube and then you are able to see that and respond to that through internet. So, completely online and we are seeing each other, we are responding, but then we have removed the boundaries. So, it is good, but it, it is also changing the times, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, iPod, the web, the internet, the mobile. In fact, I am going to devote one complete lecture, the next one on the mobile. And other than this, new devices, new applications, new technologies, new practices. Now, what is this doing to us? This affects the mind and the body, the thought patterns, thinking capabilities, ways of expression, communication, change in language. We use SMS language in exam papers. We use chat language in uh, formal letters which we are supposed to write to some director or for a job application and we do not know the difference. Our talk itself has changed, handwriting has changed because typewriter has taken place completely. We use typing, we no more write. So, even if we write, our hand fingers are not tuned to good writing. So, they scribble, so it is not very clear. So, this change, it is not only affecting the mind, but it affects the mind, the body because of technology. So, the human if you look at it as pointed out by another uh, uh, critic on techno science and uh, cyber culture, he says that the human today is rarely divorced from technology. You cannot separate the human being from technology it has completely permeated us and interpenetrated us. Look at the quote from him, he says, technology is within medical technologies, beside telephones and outside satellites. So, you go to moon using technology, you go to Mars using technology, when you go to hospital it is technology, when you make a telephone it is technology. Man inhabits technology when he functions in a climate controlled office space. So, when you use air conditioning, so you are actually inhabiting technology in a climate controlled one or technology inhabits man when it functions in him as a pacemaker. So, technology goes inside you, lives in you as a pacemaker. When man uses for instance, a pair of eyeglasses as a prosthetic device, even the eyeglass that we use the watch that we use, the pen that we use, these are all prosthetic devices. The device which we rely upon so much, but they are machines. Technology seems to be an appendage as an added one. Nevertheless, as man works in assembly line, he appears to serve as an appendage. Okay. So, if you look at it, we cannot completely remove technology from us, nor we can come out of uh, technology. Now, what is the final point I am trying to make? In terms of technology and human personality, its influence on our personality, despite the benefits that it has conferred on mankind and uh, so many things that we have got 
out of technology. Three keywords you should keep in your mind whenever you are using technology, any kind of technology. The first keyword is control, the second one is benefit and the third one is choice. Now, ask these kind of questions related to control. Ask the question, who controls technology? Take for example, internet technology, who is controlling it? You put something, do you have your ability to take it back? Okay. Facebook, who is controlling it? You put something, but do you have control over it? Or is somebody else is controlling you using that? your own mobile technology, do you have control over mobile or is mobile trying to control you? Who is controlling technology? Okay. If it is not you, so then there is some problem with your personality because only when you gain control over anything that is determining your personality and identity, you will be able to develop it you will be able to enhance it. Growth is not possible if some kind of external source is trying to control yourself, your identity and personality. Remember, our entire course philosophy is to change the inside first and then make modifications outside, not only focus on the outside. Okay. Now, in that sense, you need to know who is controlling you inside using technology. If somebody is doing that, it is high time that you have to distance from that and restore your sense of identity. Ask the other questions associated with benefits. Who benefits from it? So, when you buy a particular brand of phone, who is benefiting? Of course, there is some amount of benefit for you also, but you keep asking who is finally benefiting? Is it you or somebody else? So, that question again will make you realize that the benefits that you are getting may be just an illusion, may not be really what you are getting and somebody else may be making you believe that you are getting certain benefits, but actually making you addicted to some bad habits by which you will always believe that you are getting the benefits, you will be never able to come out of the bad habits. and like the zigarnik effect that we talked about, things will keep remaining incomplete, your mind will go back to that again and again and somebody else is taking benefit out of this situation. And the last question that you need to ask is, do we have a choice? Can I choose something? Now, apparently you will think that, oh, I choose when I go to the uh, uh, market and I want to buy something when I go to the mall to buy something, I choose it. But if you ask yourself very carefully, how did you make this choice? Okay. Somebody told you, how did that somebody tell you? Is it a marketing person or a sales person or a friend or a colleague? How did they get the impression? Who told them this? They read from something, they saw an advertisement, they heard it on the radio, they watched it on the TV or you yourself watched some advertisements or you saw your neighbor wearing that, using it. So, it entered into your mind that you should also own it. So, the choice which looks like you actually wanted to buy that on your own thinking itself is not correct. Somebody has actually penetrated your thinking itself and given you some kind of image in your mind that only if you buy that, only if you eat it, only if you wear it, only if you have it, then you are really making a good choice that is telling your identity and personality. But actually when you think that you have a choice, you actually have no choice. The other thing that you should ask in relation to this is, who is choosing it for you? Okay. Generally, we can ask this question, who is choosing for us, if we are not making the choice? And is it the same person who is benefiting from uh, whatever we are using as consumers? And is it the same person who is also trying to control the direction of technology, where it moves, what should be the next aspect of technology? 
Now, if it is the same person, same group, same corporation, so then you have to be careful about not getting enslaved in the kind of trap that is surrounding you. Now, it is rather appears to be easily said, but I know that it is not that easy to follow. I will give you more illustrations in the next one as taking mobile as an example and how it has actually captured our uh, imagination, our creativity and then everything has been seized and then it has taken complete control and possession of us. Before we go to that, just two thoughts for you, one from the famous Albert Einstein. He said that long ago whatever he said at that point of time is appearing to become so real now in the contemporary information age and the age of technology. He said, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. I am not going to interpret this, I just want you to look at the other one that is available on Facebook about mobile phones and make the comparison yourself and arrive at a quick conclusion. Mobile phones make you closer to person far from you, mobile phones makes you closer to person far from you, but it takes you away from the ones sitting next to you. So, it is connecting to people far from you, but it is taking you away from the one sitting next to you. Think about this. So, in the next lecture, I am going to focus more on how mobile is used for communication, but how effectively it should be used and how ineffectively it is being used. So, with this, I conclude this uh, lecture. Thank you for uh, watching this video. And as I said, I am very happy that we have uh, crossed off of this course and then be with us, be actively participating in the forum and all that. Thank you once again.